Hi, I'm Captain Mike Pruitt with the Wayne Township Fire Department, and it is Hot Friday. And when I say Hot Friday, that means we are going to start bringing you safety messages on a weekly basis, on Fridays, if you didn't figure that out. <laughs> and we're starting our very first one out with a very important message that we continually preach all the time, and that is on smoke alarms. And today, I have Jamie Meredith, who is our public educator for the Wayne Township Fire Department. Jamie spends a lot of time out in the community teaching adults and children, which we know children tend to retain these safety messages Absolutely. much better than adults sometimes. But I wanted to bring Jamie in to kick this whole series of safety messages off to talk about the thing that is probably most important to us when it comes to safety in your home or even in your business sometimes. Jamie, welcome to Thank Hot Thank you. Friday. I appreciate it. So Jamie, why is it important to have smoke alarms in the home? Smoke alarms are really our first line of defense in a fire. We need to make sure they're maintained and properly installed, and that way once they go off, we're able to get out of the house quickly, get to our meeting place, call 911, and get the help that we need during a fire. So where do I put smoke alarms in the home? Smoke alarms should be placed one on every level of your home, and then outside and inside your bedroom areas. And if someone's sleeping in the basement area or in a living room area, you need to make sure you cover those as well. We don't ever want to see smoke alarms in a kitchen or a bathroom because oftentimes we might see that nuisance alarm come into play if we place them directly in those rooms. So if I'm going to put smoke alarms in my home, mm -hmm. if I don't have them or if I need to put new ones in, where can I go to get these at? You know what? We can go to a big box store. We could go to a hardware store. You can go to your local fire department and see if they're able to give any. Oftentimes we'll give one to two away free to make sure that we get them in the homes in our areas so that everyone can be fire safe. Are they easy to install? Are they hard to install? You know what? They're fairly easy. They usually require two screws and a screwdriver. A ladder is probably the most difficult part because we want to make sure they're placed in the, on the ceiling in the center of the room, away from um, ceiling fans, vents. So if you're not able to climb on a ladder, you might call the fire department, see if they're willing to come out and help you. Or something else, you might ask a neighbor or a family member to come and help you as well. So I get this installed, which it sounds pretty easy to install, that even I could do it, not being <laughs> super mechanically inclined. But how do I keep these working after I have them installed? Well, depending on what type it is, oh, I'm sorry, our batteries. So we might look at a 9-volt battery, and that's what we see most common in smoke alarms. So our 9-volt, when we're looking at it, we're going to change this out two times a year. And we're looking at, basically, now we change our clocks twice a year with daylight savings. So we, again, will take this 9-volt and we'll change it out. It keeps the sound very loud, and it keeps our detectors working to the best of their ability. Now, we also have what are called 10-year lithium batteries. And these are also in the new alarms that we're seeing that are required in Marion County. So if you live within the county, then you're going to have to have a 10-year lithium. And what we see there is it's going to be sealed in. There's no way to get to this battery, so you're never changing it. But you're going to test it by testing, by pushing the button that says test. And you're going to make sure that on all, any of these, that we're going to make sure that we're testing it and hearing the sound. And we'll know that it's good and functioning and all the batteries are working. So when we talk about batteries, that kind of leads me into my next conversation. And that's about these nuisance alarms. Mm -hmm. When we go to the schools, kids wrap their parents out all the time. Kids are very honest. They are very honest. <laughs> uh, when mom or dad burn food, it right. sets the smoke alarm off. They take the battery out of the smoke alarm. They don't put it back in. And that's, that's just a tragic way to deal with smoke alarms because when you need it, it's not going to be there to work. So when we talk about that, I mean, the 10-year battery, we don't have that tampering ability to pull that battery out like that and put it back in. So talk a little bit about what we can do if we have that nuisance alarm going off all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Some of the alarms you will see that it actually has a place that you can push and it will clear the field for just a few moments or seconds until that smoke actually goes another way, either by fanning it or whatever. But usually what that means is if we have a nuisance alarm that's going off, whether it's in the bathroom area or kitchen area, it's just because of the placement of the smoke alarm. So that means at that point we need to be moving that. So we're looking at moving it 8 to 10 feet down the hall in either direction from those doors. It depends how your house is set up, but you you will learn very quickly that if you move it one direction or the other and it does and once you cook it's not going to continue to go off so very important placement like we said away from ceiling fans away from vents away from our um, bathroom doors and our kitchen 
there is. So you brought some extra show and tell items here? I did. Uh, because when you do walk into a big box store, and I know a lot of times when I'm walking down the aisle, I see what the new latest and greatest is in smoke, uh, smoke alarms. And it can be a little confusing, a little overwhelming that you see all different prices, Absolutely. all different types. So can you kind of break it down on what we need to be looking for on the package and what that actually means? Absolutely. When we look at this one, this is something that you might see in a big box store just sitting on a shelf. And this one tells me right here by the P on it that it's a photoelectric. Photoelectric is basically telling me that if we have a smoldering fire in our home, such as a piece of furniture is smoldering, uh, wiring in the wall, something that's not actually flaming fire, that this is the type of alarm that I need in my home. This is also telling me it's a 10-year lithium. And there are other instructions on the back of where you need to place them in the home. But when we go into different things, this one happens to be an ionization. So these are the two you're going to see. A P and an I are the two main ones that you'll always see somewhere on the shelf. And the ionization one is for flaming fire. So if we have a grease fire on our stove, oftentimes this is the alarm that's going to go off more quickly. Uh, for a long time, ionizations were basically what we saw out there. Now we see a few more P's, much more than we've seen before. So ionization, photoelectric, these are the two. Like I said, ionization when we're looking at flaming fires, photoelectric when we're looking at smoldering fires. This particular one here is what we call a dual censored, and this is an I and a P. So if you have it placed somewhere, it's going to go off probably quicker than either of these two because it's going to sense both of those that come into play. On the actual back of your alarm, it will tell you what type it is, and it will also tell you a date. And that helps to tell us that our alarms are good 8 to 10 years. But if this date is, if you add 10 years to this and it's outdated, you need to take those down. We need to get those replaced so that you can have good working smoke alarms, so you can get out of your house in the event of a fire, and everyone can stay safe. So when we walk into the store and we're looking, some of the packages say combination alarm. Absolutely. That doesn't necessarily mean an I and a P, does it? That is true. Oftentimes we'll see that combination where it's talking about um, a fire alarm and it's also talking about a carbon monoxide alarm. They actually are requiring two different heights, so it's very hard when you have one item to place it two different areas. So we always place on a ceiling area for our fire alarms, and then our carbon monoxide requires lower placement. So we always want to make sure that we avoid those. We're not looking for that combination. The only combination we're looking for would be a P and an I or a photoelectric and ionization. Do not combine your carbon monoxide with your fire alarm. So I think the message is here. Um, what, you, what you can afford is important, obviously, as you can spend different levels of money on these. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is, is you owe it to your family to have a working smoke alarm 24-7 in that home so in the event of a fire you can escape in a timely manner. We've seen it every year Absolutely. that people don't escape their home. They mm -hmm. die in their sleep because they didn't have a working smoke alarm. So very important information that uh, you provided us today. Thank you. Uh, Make sure you get it working. Make sure you're testing these. Make sure you're hearing that sound when you test it. And it never hurts to practice pushing that button and taking everybody through a home drill to make sure right. they know what to do if they hear the smoke alarm go off. Practice your escape plans. Get out of the house as quickly as you can. Don't go back in for any reason. Thank you, Jamie, for coming Thank in. You. Great information. We'll probably touch on smoke alarms every year because that's just one of those Absolutely. things we do. I'm Captain Mike Pruitt with Wayne Township Fire Department, and this has been Hot Friday, and thanks for tuning in.